Watch out! Quite a few of you have asked for my review of the smallest, cheapest model out of AMD's current new Ryzen 5000 lineup, and here I am. I am presenting you the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X equipped with 6 cores and 12 threads based on Zen 3. While I'm pretty late to the party, many of you know by now why I've taken my time with these reviews. Anyway, what I can tell you right off the bat is that today's 5600X in terms of gaming is one hell of a beast. For a 6 core, we are seeing insane gaming performance, and on top of that, it also happens to run super efficiently and cool. For a lot of you out there, this may or may not be the ultimate gaming CPU by AMD. However, it does come with a pretty serious downside, a very serious one. At the end of the day, pricing plays a major role as always. It's worth noting though, that other than with AMD's 5800X, 5900X and 5950X CPUs, they have decided against slamming that $50 premium on top of their 5600X's MSRP. So it's obvious AMD is slowly trying to increase pricing as seen with those more expensive SKUs. But well, at least this 6 core 5600X for now comes in at the same exact MSRP of 299 US dollars as its predecessor 3600X did. In reality though, pricing and availability looks horrible right now. We are talking of prices upwards of $380, $500 or more aren't even an exception. When looking back, a 3600X never really cost that much money, so the 5600X runs into the danger of being known as a processor with a pretty bad price to performance ratio, especially when comparing against a Ryzen 5 3600 or 3600X. But then again, current pricing needs to be viewed as a temporarily bad situation if you will. The whole CPU and GPU market is looking pretty grim right now, it's pure chaos to be honest. So all we can do is hope for pricing and availability to return to normal sometime in the near future. Alright, as you're used to with my reviews, I'll put today's 5600X directly against its predecessor 3600X but also 3600. And needless to say, we'll also take a nice look at how well it stacks up against offerings by Intel, even though according to the latest news, we should be expecting new stuff by Intel in the next few months. So let's not waste any more time, let's get into it. Now before we really get started, a quick thank you goes out to Yorgios over at the hardware shop Equipper for getting a hold on all these Ryzen 5000 processors I needed for my testing so quickly. Without Yorgios or Equipper, I wouldn't even be nowhere close to completing these reviews. So thanks goes out to that hardworking team, hashtag not sponsored. As is the case with that $50 price premium or lack thereof on the 5600X, AMD has also decided to keep including a cooling solution with their Ryzen 5 CPU. As you may know, those Ryzen 7 and 9 siblings no longer come with any stock cooler included. While for a processor ending with an X, we are only getting that measly Wraith Stealth by AMD with a pretty pathetic amount of aluminum on it, it's still better than none at all. I will of course put that cooler to the test for you guys and will check how CPU clock speeds are affected by it compared to a more capable all-in-one liquid cooler. As I've already told you in my last few videos, AMD has more or less said goodbye to their Zen 2 core layout. With Zen 2 we got a maximum of 8 core dies, which at the end of the day consisted of two smaller 4 core groups. Those 4 core groups went by the name of CCX units or core complex units. We are still using the same terms even now. However, communication has been improved drastically with Zen 3 thanks to a new core layout. We are still talking of a maximum of 8 core dies or CCDs, but those no longer consist of split groups anymore. An 8 core die therefore at the end of the day really is just a single 8 core die that is not a result of two 4 core CCXs. As it's the case with the Ryzen 9 5900X 12 core, AMD has simply disabled two cores of that 8 core die on the 5600X, meaning we get a 6 core. What's playing a big role in those drastically reduced latencies, thus noticeably more performance is the fact that the whole 8 core complex, in this case with 6 cores, have full access to the whole 32 megabytes of level 3 cache. Very well, in the heart of my test system is the one and only, to me breathtaking, ASRock X570PG Velocita or Velocita motherboard. 
Of course, the B550 chipset would appear to suit this CPU better, but for consistency reasons, I generally stick with the same X570 motherboard for all my tests, and nothing's going to change that. I would like to make clear though, that X570 does not get you any performance benefits over B550, most of the time depending on the features we are talking about. Again, due to consistency reasons, I went with my usual Deepcool Castle 240EX AIO liquid cooler for my tests. The Nvidia RTX 3090 once again takes the role as the graphics card and display, as always the tough gaming model by ASUS. Very well, now to the clock speeds with both cooling solutions. With the included Wraith Stealth, the 5600X and the multicore test at first clocks at about 4240 MHz, but then quickly drops down to 4140, 4120, and in the end hovers around somewhere in between 4070 and 4090 MHz. When I repeat the same test with my AIO liquid cooling, at first I can happily witness roughly 4270 or 4290 MHz, a few short spikes with over 4300, but worst case scenario we are talking of 4240 MHz, which is noticeably higher than what I've achieved with the boxed cooler. PBO Precision Boost Overdrive was disabled throughout all my testing to not introduce any additional variables. What are things looking like in terms of boost clocks? AMD states a maximum of 4.6 GHz. Even with the measly Wraith Stealth, my CPU clocks past that official max. It's 4642 MHz here. In fact, even with the more powerful CPU cooler, I don't really achieve any higher results than that, which totally makes sense. I'm getting the same results because the CPU does not reach a high enough temperature to trigger light clock speed throttling. In-game in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I'm reading out roughly 4642 MHz when using the box cooler to cool, sometimes maybe a bit less than that, pretty much identical results I see with my liquid cooler. So as long as the CPU is not under heavy AVX loads, there don't seem to be any noteworthy differences in clock speeds, and that is great news actually for gamers, because that means you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a better cooler to get the maximum performance in games. Alright, now I see we still haven't gotten to the test results, which means we need to catch up now. So here are the benchmarks. Enjoy!
Well, there you go. These are some pretty nice test results. I'll keep my conclusion a bit shorter this time around, otherwise the video is going to end up a little too long for my taste. Not only in rendering, productivity and so on, but also in games, the Ryzen 5 5600X with its 6 cores and 12 threads puts on an impressive show and ranks quite high. The 5600X simply is a lot faster than its predecessor 3600X, especially when it comes to raw gaming performance. In fact, the 5600X is even putting up a good fight against the Intel i7-10700K in games. And that, my friends, happens to be an 8-core CPU with hyperthreading. Although that speedy 10700K still remains the faster, more capable processor for the most part. Nonetheless, there are exceptions and generally speaking, the 5600X doesn't drop behind the 10700K by much, which clearly can be seen in my FPS average chart. But wouldn't it be fairer to compare 6-core with 6-core? Well, yes, but at the end of the day, pricing is all that matters to us consumers. And right now, at this very moment, both the 5600X and 10700K share the same price range, especially over here in Europe. An i5-10600K with 6 cores is significantly cheaper, but on average it's also a bit slower than the 5600X, depending on the game title. And this is the moment many of you will notice the problem we might run into. The price of $300 or right now more like $380 to $500 for the 5600X is not as attractive anymore as things were looking when the last generation launched. Especially that Ryzen 5 3600 really managed to impress big time in terms of value for money. But oh well, who knows, AMD might surprise us with a Ryzen 5 5600 non-X at a later date. But compared to what we were used to from Zen 2, AMD with its current pricing does not deserve praise from me here. Aside from that, at a price of over $300, we could once more start the controversial debate of future-proofness. It may or may not be wiser to just get the i7-10700K that sports 8 cores. In the end, depending on the current deals and how much the whole platform would cost you. After all, motherboard and cooling also need to be factored in when talking about price. Nevertheless, if we were to buy the 5600X for a reasonable amount of money, it sure would be a great deal in my opinion. Especially power consumption and temperatures make this processor shine. The 5600X, without a doubt, is extremely power efficient, doesn't consume a whole lot of power and runs quite cool. Even 73 degrees Celsius with AMD's included with stealth is not a bad result, when keeping in mind those few grams of aluminum that cooler is equipped with. Long story short, the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X is pretty impressive, brings some hefty performance gains over last gen parts to the table and keeps up fairly well with those beastly Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9 CPUs as well as Intel's 10th gen offerings. The only gripe I have here is the price of the 5600X. It could be rather problematic, depending on how you decide to look at it at the end of the day. What I'm not used to anymore is to say Intel could offer some great alternatives in this price bracket. We'll also have to wait and see what the Blue Giant will grace us with within the next few months. At the right price, I can for sure recommend the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X, a close to perfect CPU with its only fatal drawback may or may not being the wrong price tag. With that said, thanks for watching, take care guys, until next time.